My name is Anna Tang. I am with the League of American Bicyclists, and I just want to welcome you to this webinar on how to host a candidate forum. Um, we are joined today by Mike Sewell, who is the executive director of Asheville on Bikes in North Carolina. Uh, we did this webinar at the National Bike Summit this year, and it it was met with like such warm welcome and such positive feedback that we wanted to bring it to our broader audience of advocates and bicyclists across the country. And we are recording it. So if you or anybody else that you know would like to watch it later, we will have it available for viewing later. And talking about the bike summit, I just wanted to put a link in the chat now. I'll also put it in later, but just a call for submitting a, an RFP if you would like to submit that for this year's summit as well as a save the date. So this year, the National Bike Summit will be happening March 19th through the 21st in DC per usual. And we would love to see you there and have you join us. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike, and also just a friendly reminder that this is being recorded. So just so you know, um, Mike, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Thanks uh, for taking time out of your day to uh, attend this webinar. I'm really excited to uh, share some of this uh, knowledge that I've learned over the years. Um, last night, uh, there's in the next town over, Brevard, North Carolina, uh, there's an organization uh, that is coalescing around safe streets uh, called the, the the Bavard Bicycle Alliance. And I've been working a little bit with them and they hosted their first uh, candidates forum uh, in Brevard. And it was it, it was really great to see. I think there were about 100 people there. All of the candidates uh, attended and it really was a great and fantastic event. Um, so, uh, you know, Please put this stuff into motion, tweak it in your own way, make it your own. Um, but I just like to share some of the ideas and concepts um, that have worked for uh, Asheville on Bikes in uh, Asheville, North Carolina over the years. Now, let me see. Can I, I've been out of the pandemic a little bit. So my, my, can, can everyone see my screen? I can. I think. All right. Good to go. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Okay. So yes, uh, Mike Sewell, executive director of Asheville on Bikes. Asheville on Bikes is a 501c3 nonprofit with the mission of cultivating the culture of urban and commuter riding through advocacy, education, and celebration. And uh, education most often looks like our youth cycling uh, program. Uh, we work in uh, Asheville Middle School, and we get the students in our community who are least likely to have access to bikes up and riding uh, their city. We also do summer programming with a few other uh, nonprofits that serve um, our youth. Our candidates forms are actually housed in our education uh, uh, programming. Um, we don't uh, because we, we we are just hosting a conversation as a 501c3. We do not in endorse candidates, um, but you are absolutely able to have an education session um, and ask uh, candidates or anyone um, questions around uh, the issue. Um, so the second uh, uh, prong of uh, Asheville on Bikes is uh, that we advocate and um, we do a lot of different programs. Um, when I get off of this webinar, I am actually headed to our city council meeting for the final vote on a complete streets project. Uh, I'm really hoping that I get to celebrate with uh, some friends and supporters later tonight that this project is going to move um, forward. And then thirdly, uh, celebration, right? Because riding a bike, I mean, one of the things that's really great about our movement and our work is that it is full of joy. Riding a bicycle is that childlike uh, experience, and that is a huge asset uh, in our work, and it's something that we really need to put out in front and uh, embrace. Uh, so we do a lot of events um, that are free, that are open to the public, and that are designed to roll open um, uh, the, the welcome mat to some of those reluctant cyclists out there in the world. So that's Asheville on Bikes in a nutshell, and I will move on with the... Uh, the presentation there there's our uh, logo okay so how to host a candidates uh form and um a few things to consider 
uh, is, you know, consider your community uh, readiness and um, identify the purpose. Um, you want to establish a format and plan and host an event. And then from there, you know, everything is a work in progress. So, you know, reflect, adjust, iterate, and uh, repeat, if, especially if you're doing this for the, for the first time. Uh, I would encourage you not to um, focus on all of the details, but pick two or three things that um, you want to do really well and um, give yourself pause and a breath and uh, the, the uh, appreciation of um, growing from there. Um, oops, why can I? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, I went, so I apologize. It might be, there we go. Okay, it's back on. Um, and again, like, you know uh, your community and uh, build from there. And then in terms of um, the purpose, I really encourage uh, groups to prioritize trust over policy. And what that means is, um, as you organize a candidate's form, one of the, the strategies that I really encourage people to think about is that you wanna let those candidates, a percentage of whom are gonna become your elected leaders, you wanna let those candidates know that um, the issue of, of safe and complete streets is important and um, that you are a, uh, a trusted uh, advocate uh, in this work. Um, you want to build that relationship so that one candidate who gets elected is calling on you. You want to show that candidate that um, a respectful uh, dialogue. Um, you want to show that candidate that there are people in the community that uh, uh, care about this issue. So you're really the the long or the the main goal is to establish trust with your city council candidates, some of whom will be. Um, you know, you'll elect the leaders, opening those lines of uh, communication and establishing credibility. If you can talk about complete streets and bicycle lanes and protected bike lanes, it's likely that that uh, uh, representative is going to call on you when um, there is a problem or there is a need in the city, you know, like, oh, who are the bike people? Who are the, who are the complete streets people? Um, and so you're really opening up lines of communication for uh, future um, political and infrastructure wins, but that is not today. Trust. Ah, I'm having an issue advancing my slides. I found that sometimes when I have blurred my background, it just slows my computer down just ever so slightly. Okay. So let me go back here. I apologize for the, uh, gosh, I feel like I used to be so, uh, what if I do that? Oh, there we go. Okay. So um, I'm just going to take you on a, uh, a really quick tour uh, about um, how we do this and just cover some really um, big and basic uh, basics, you know, because if you're not used to throwing events or parties or candidates forums, uh, getting the word out and the invitation and all of those sort of logistical things might seem uh, really overwhelming. And uh, so I'm going to just go into the the. the uh, some of the things that we have used. So I'll pull up my, uh, okay. And so what we do a lot is um, uh, using Google Drafts, um, rather than writing like each individual emails, we get everything into uh, one doc document and get that uh, finalized. That way, when uh, you're communicating with candidates, you're really going into a copy and paste job. All of the candidates are getting the same information um, at the same time, and it makes it uh, much easier. You're, you're just opening that doc and plopping it into an email and tracking it. So I just want, thought I would show you what a um, typical uh, invite would look like. Uh, this would probably be our subject line right here, uh, a link um, to our website. If you uh, have a website, and then obviously putting um, the uh, the time or the date. Oh, look, I, I, I didn't put the time. Uh, and then using a Google form uh, to, or some other way to get a uh, RSVP. And I'll, I'll click back on that for a minute. Um, also, running the candidate know, you know, once you're going to follow up, um, 
with the primary form de details, uh, people will follow back up. And then basically this is the structure that they can uh, anticipate uh, and expect. Um, and we can go into that uh, in more details. Um, and then additionally on Ashalon Bikes, we've been hosting candidates forums for, I think over like, at least over a decade now. Um, and so we have built up on our web page um, a whole section about uh, four voters. And I'll, I'll get to that uh, in a minute, but let me go back to the top of the page. So again, linking to our website, I'm not gonna take you into that uh, right now, but I'll show you what our RSVP um, looks like so that you can, um, so what is your first and last name? I think it's very, you know, imperative that you ask about um, pronouns. Uh, what is the best email to contact your campaign? The email that you use to connect, connect with that candidate or the uh, campaign might not be the preferred email moving forward in the future. And so really getting clear on, uh, hey, you know, getting that documented. All of this information is being uploaded into a spreadsheet. So when I have to go back in and connect with candidates, all of this information is going to be right there, uh, right in front of me. Um, again, uh, the date, the time. If you don't have all the details at the time that the invitation goes out, you know, that's okay. But like work on that and you got to get that down. Um, and then will you respond to uh, AOB's candidate questionnaire if you are uh, doing that? And again, you know, I give candidates um, the opportunity to make that firm commitment or to say, no, I'm not going to do it, or maybe that they will, or they might have a question um, about that uh, um, questionnaire as well. And so again, opening those lines of communication, you know, it's not like we're going to hold you to this or to that, but like... Uh, what might might work for you, and then also having um, uh, any any uh, follow up follow up questions. So that's basically what our um, RSVP uh, looks like. Nope, I'm going all over the place. And so this is what our uh, candidates forms uh, often um, look like. Uh, we generally try and host in a public space or at a uh, interesting venue. Um, this is hosted, this candidate's form was hosted at a brewery um, called The Wedge. We did it outside and uh, it's also adjacent to a lot of other uh, shops. There's a coffee shop, um, there's a bicycle shop there, there's like a... Um, uh, like a, a, a market, an art studio. So it's kind of an interesting place um, to be. Uh, and uh, we like the, you know, the outdoor, the outdoor uh, setting as well, you know, getting the chairs, amplification, um, all of those types of things that you want to uh, uh, consider as well. Yeah, let me do it like this. So. And then what we also do is we also leave time for uh, candidates to table. And what that means is, you know, sometimes we use the existing facilities that, that are out of place or we might have to call a bunch of people and get some uh, folding tables. You can see a folding table in the background and this picnic table uh, was part of the, um, uh, the Wedge Brewery. Uh, but we also provide time for our participants to meet with um, our candidates uh, as well. So it's not just a formal, hey, come on in, have a seat, here's your question and answer, but that so that people can talk to candidates um, about the uh, issues that uh, concern them. We that obviously ask people to focus on issues of, of, of transportation, but if some other issues uh, leak in there as well, uh, that's okay. Again, we're establishing trust with our candidates. We're establishing trust with um, our participants. So if we have a great uh, civic dialogue uh, about some other issue, uh, that's okay because it was done under the umbrella of uh, Asheville on bikes. And uh, um, that is going to, pay dividends in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the future. Um, we do do a candidates form that is um, uh, question and answer. Uh, here you, 
these are the uh, participants. There I am back in the background. And then we have all, all of the candidates um, up to uh, answer a, a variety of uh, questions. And then again, this is another picture of um, our primary candidates form with the, the candidate up giving them time to um, speak. This is our uh, mayor, Esther Manheimer, when she was running for re-election. And again, this is what tabling looks like at our at our candidates forum. Picnic table, a couple of beverages, uh, people having a, 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 uh, uh, a conversation. And I'll go back into the specifics of, of these formats um, as well. Uh, this is council person uh, Kim Roney. And again, tabling, talking with people, um, as part of the format of the of the um, event. Okay, so establishing the format. Um, one of the things that uh, we do is, is a three act. Um, we've called it uh, the step right up, uh, the stump, um, the soapbox. And this is a very uh, approachable candidates form to be able to be able to do. Um, it works in three different acts. Each candidate that's running for office, will have some sort of stump speech just as a as you know that's part of the deal the elevator pitch the stump speech and so you can invite your candidates and say okay this is what we're going to do we're going to do a, a a a candidates form in three acts the first act is going to be you up front and you will get the chance to talk uh to your constituent your potential constituents uh three minutes un uninterrupted so each candidate gets an opportunity for those three minutes. Act two um, is sort of that a little bit more of active participation. And what the what happens is that the candidates go back to their tabling, either the picnic table or the folding table, and they will obviously many of them will have their uh, candidate materials out there as well. But you encourage the uh, participants, your guests, to get up out of their chairs and you do a round robin. You say, hey, we're gonna take 20 minutes right now. We want you to stand up, go see the candidates. Um, make sure you leave time for to, 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 to visit ev every single candidate and then we're gonna come back and we are gonna regroup. When you regroup, you move into um, the third act. And the third act is that the candidates are there to listen to what the voters are saying. So they are asked to come back up and uh, basically it's a reflective li uh, listening exercise. What did you hear? What did you think about what, you know, what you're hearing? What trends did you see? You leave it very open-ended and allow uh, the candidates to um, make their comments and then give their closing uh, uh, speech. And it's very simple. Um, but it's also uh, very powerful. If you are, uh, this is your first time out of the gates, I highly recommend um, the the uh, the three acts. Um, and then there are formats that are more traditional, uh, provide candidates resources, asking open-ended questions and the idea of um, embracing humor. So you noticed in our uh, back, we had our uh, four voters, um, let me make sure, let me uh, have it right here. Yes. So this is like our four voters, um, section of our, of our website. And I put this in the, uh, email that I sent to candidates. And, um, this is going to allow your candidates to get informed on some of the issues before they come. They might read some of this. A lot of them will, some of them won't. Some of them will, uh, email you and ask maybe clarifying questions or uh, things like that. And um, that's uh, totally uh, appropriate. Um, to We put up our um, our responses. We leave them up on our, on our website uh, from uh, who had answered questions from the last election cycle. They're all up there. They have the benefit of seeing how uh, other candidates in the past have uh, responded to questions and so forth. And then um, we also uh, talk about our policy positions. And um, again, it's an open resource for voters. You're educating your 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 voters. You're also educating uh, your city council uh, uh, candidates. And again, it's about that establishing trust. Who are these bike people? What do they know? 
I'm having an issue on, on a complete street. I'm going to call Asheville on bikes and get their uh, opinion. Um, and that's really a lot of the goal. Um, and so I belabor that. Um, and then, oh, whoops. Gosh, I'm all over the place. I apologize. Uh, oh, you're on the wrong way. Um, asking open-ended questions. And what I've done too is I've pulled up some of the questions that we have um, asked in the in the in the in the past and uh, these are from uh 2011 and i also have some others so an open-ended question if you had twenty thousand dollars to enhance bicycle infrastructure on any street in Asheville, which street would you improve and why and that's more of a a, a vision question twenty thousand dollars isn't a lot of money but it's a, something that like a candidate could think about that oh is that a bike rack is that a filling in a a pothole is that a is that a curb cut i mean does a curb is a curb cut or curb ramp is that going to be more than twenty thousand dollars yeah it probably will but it doesn't really matter you're getting the candidate engaged and thinking about the issues but also the issue in place and in their and in their city um Identify one economic incentive to, to implementing, uh, to be implementing uh, bicycle uh, infrastructure. Hmm, what's that about, you know? Um, identify non-physical component of the bicycle uh, master plan. Um, and what, you know, what does that mean? Is that a transit pass? Uh, things, uh, things like that. Um, Describe the location of the going on to uh, pedestrian issues. Describe the location of a street intersection in Asheville that is unsafe or inadequate for pedestrians. How do you become aware of this problem and what would you do about it? Questions like that. And we often break up our questions into bike, bus, and ped. Um, some other examples of um, questions that we have asked in the past. Again, you have transit, bike, and uh, pedestrian. What do you see as the greatest strengths of Asheville's bike uh, system? Um, question number three, as the city continues to grow, what is your vision for uh, transit? Um, the bike question, what is the Asheville's best example of bicycle infrastructure and what features make it the best? Um, these kinds of questions. Now the question and answers we generally reserve those, these types of questions for our general election. The candidates have already made it through the primary and there's been a little bit more time for the candidates to get um, a little bit more educated on uh, the policy positions and, um, uh, and so forth. And then we also added complete streets and uh, issues of parking. So some of the things like you'll see Merriman Avenue in here. So the reason that this city street was included in these questions is because it was a very timely topic. Uh, many articles had been in, uh, uh, in, in the newspaper about this Merriman Avenue new road reconfiguration. Uh, there's no candidate who in our last election cycle who did not have an opinion about uh, Merriman Avenue. So those types of things we feel are, um, are, are, are fair uh, to include. Um, so we ask questions about parking, questions about the Greenway, and this is the um, the multimodal uh, mashup. So we're taking all, all, all of the things. Question number three, what is the relationship between multimodal transportation and equity? What professional opportunities do you think are worth paying city staff to participate in and improve their knowledge? Actually, we asked this question and um, I would not ask that question again. It, that's a question that uh, landed. It was way too high level uh, and uh, it was not appreciated. Fortunately, the candidate who got asked that question uh, was very well prepared and was able to uh, pivot and make a joke about it. Um, but if that could have very easily landed uh, the wrong way, and you'd left you, I would have left someone up in front of you know a hundred people uh, with not the ability uh, to um, uh, respond. That could have been a relationship killer right there. Uh, it was not. Uh, so those are some of of the questions, and then the idea of um, embracing humor. You know, so much of our politics. 
uh, at any level have become so hot and uh, so divisive. And I remember at the beginning, I talked about the idea of joy. Um, and when we, and so much of this uh, uh, topic of transportation and active transportation is about the future. It is about equity. It's about connectivity. It's about pleasant places uh, to be. And so I really encourage you to bring that uh, levity and humor forward in, into your, um, uh, your, your candidate form as well. Uh, good conversations. I was going to show you a one an example. So right here, if you notice on the candidates' tables, there's a variety of um, hats. And one of the things that we build into our candidates' form is the idea of uh, a tip of the hat. So this candidate is saying, um, answering a question, and uh, this candidate agrees with what this candidate is saying. So we wanted to have a, uh, a visual cue. So you can tip the hat uh, to, to demonstrate that you, um, you agree. Um, we also have a uh, wag of the finger, um, which if a candidate says something, the speaking candidate says something that one of the seated candidates does not agree with, um, one of these candidates could have a uh, two minute rebuttal to offer a uh, different um, uh, perspective or a different take on on uh, you know what was being asked. So I think like incorporating some kind of gimmicks or some kind of uh, fun just to kind of lighten it up and make it a little bit more conversational. You know, can't, some of the candidates bring their own hats. We have a bunch of uh, um, uh, hats as well. So those kind of personal touches um really 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 make the event and then lastly um build in time for uh uh conversation pre and and, and really post uh um uh conversation you know uh right here um esther manheimer is our uh mayor uh maggie ullman right here was elected as a uh, city council member um, we have a city transportation uh planner um Joe is a member of our uh, planning and zoning, and um, Richie is on the Greenway Committee, uh, and he also runs uh, an e-bike uh, uh, touring company in, in Asheville. So allowing that social time uh, for, for, for these, these folks are probably often on a email thread quite a bit. They're probably not uh, hanging out uh, a lot in their in their in their free time outside of their professional, and so these types of can uh, forums and formats create that uh, conversation that is so um, essential. And then um, this is uh, lastly um, the team that uh, built uh, the candidates forum. Um, I do a lot of the pre setup, the pre work. Um, I am never the MC at uh, or um, or the facilitator at our candidates forum. I always get somebody else to do it. I like to be a little bit removed as the um, executive director and sort of have that disinterested third party come in and, and uh, uh, conduct. And that um, Leela, uh, Rob over here, um, he works in our after school bicycle program, um, uh, as does Maddie, and they do a lot of the uh, setting up and the tearing down and making sure um, that the uh, that the tables are all set. And uh, this is Abby Walker right here. Uh, she's my um, executive assistant, and uh, she is making sure that uh, all of the details that <laughs> I have not thought about are uh, uh, taken care of. So when you're doing this, go into it with a team, build that team, put that team to work, and um, absolutely uh, appreciate uh, that team as well. So with that, that is really the conclusion of um, my presentation. And I think we can use the, uh, I would love to field some questions and uh, have a conversation about this. Great, thank you so much. Um, that was wonderful, super informative. I always learn something new from you, even though, you know, I, uh, I've heard it before, but it's just so great. Um, I'm going to, 
ask people if they want to ask a question, you can just unmute yourselves and ask since we're not a super massive group of people here. So I know there's some questions already, um, but I'll let Jennifer start. Great, hi, thanks so much for the presentation. I'm with Bike Santa Fe out in New Mexico. And we're having our first ever candidate forum next week on Tuesday. So I was kind of glad to see some of the things you went through or some of the things that we've done. But my question is, what is your budget for the actual event when you put it together? Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, around now, sometimes that, you know, the budget, it can be anywhere between like $1,500 and $3,000 like now. Uh, it was not uh, always that way. Um, and we're actually spending less money on our candidates forms because there's a couple of, there's a bunch of assets now that we own. Um, like that stage is ours. It's actually part of a pop-up uh, bike park. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the PA yeah. system that was used uh, is act that actually belongs to the wedge, uh, the brewery, and they um, allowed us to use that. Mm -hmm. So that um, uh, didn't, didn't really cost much. Most of our costs, honestly, are in uh, the promotion. Um, I try and do a, I have a, uh, a stone soup man mentality. Do you, are you familiar with that, that legend of the stone stoop and the, the, mm -hmm. the two soldiers? Um, so yeah. I'm like, I, I like to get everyone together and sort of uh, stone soup it, right? Oh man, we need some folding tables. Hey, who's got, who's got the folding, you know, you have one, oh, you have one. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most bike shops have, have a folding table, you know, so you get like five bike shops mm -hmm. to give you one folding table and um, there you go. And you can appreciate them. So you can really yeah. cut your costs uh, down. I think like quite a bit when we first started doing this, I don't even think we had a hundred dollar budget. Yeah. Yeah. How many people usually attend your forums? Um, it really, sorry, that's follow-up. No, yeah, no, that's right. It, it, you know, it varies from year to year. I think at our, you know, our first one, we might've had like 30 people and now, uh, uh, depending on the political climate, um, you know, we, we've had them that like full swell of like 150, um, and then to, 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 I'd say the 80 to 150 is kind of, um, somewhere around there annually moving forward. Um, and the, the, the other thing about attendance just really quick on that is that you also want to think about, um, it's not so much how many people are coming to your candidate form, but how many people are attending candidate forums in your area. And you really start, mm -hmm. you really need to gauge your turnout and your effectiveness of, of, of your form by comparing it to the attendance of other forms that are happening. Great, thank you. Um, Shane, would you like to ask your questions live? Um, I can give you a second, great. Sure, I can do that. Let me just go ahead and put my face on. Here we go. Um, so I had a couple of questions here. I, I have been a candidate for him and it was a lot of work and it was just like um, we did it and we had nine candidates. So it was trying to give them time to go ahead and do it. And we did the more traditional Q&A uh, type of farm. And even then with two hours, it was still pushing our, our luck trying to cover the topic that we only, we only did four questions and that was all you had time for. But I really liked um, how you doing some of this with the breweries and local businesses do you find that's a better environment and maybe not trying to do too many candidates one time but just kind of have like a bunch of little things that allows candidate to show up on one night versus another night and just that allows people to kind of come whichever night that they feel like they can come uh i i would not recommend that and again i'm gonna uh, but i am gonna go back to uh, you know your community more than I do, and so I don't want to. I uh, certainly don't want to discourage a thing that might be a successful strategy for for your community. But my rationale in Asheville is would be that generally the candidates are uh, really booked. You know, they they they've got to be uh, 
talking to the business association on Tuesday, the bikes on Wednesday, the uh, AARP on Thursday, you know, and so forth and so forth. And so you sort of have like a, uh, you know, one bang for your buck or uh, one and done. Um, certainly having nine candidates would be a, uh, that would be a uh, significant challenge. Um, I try and run our programming so that it really does not exceed um, like 45 minutes of uh, programming. You know, we're getting people um, after work uh, before they have to, or they're, they're making plans to be away from their family or to get childcare or to bring their kids there, or, you know, people are really busy. They're really busy and they, and they, and um, so, I don't have a direct answer of like, how would you manage uh, nine candidates? I mean, perhaps the, the the stump and you would just shrink the amount of time each candidate has to talk. You know, maybe they have like one minute for an introduction and then the rest of the time is spent like uh, mingling about and they, then, then they do like a quick uh, 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 close. But I mm -hmm. think if your programming is extending like over an hour, um, you're, you're, people are getting, we tend to be less engaged and more, you know, you're like just sucking the energy out of folks. So that would be, you know, again, you know, your community better than I do. Uh, but that's just um, my, my uh, advice, nope. my opinion, my opinion. I appreciate it. Thanks. Did you want to ask your uh, other question about um, how many do you do in election season? Um, well, yeah, I, I would get in the sense of the forum here, but it sounds like your organization hold maybe two or more forums in an election season. Yes, generally in election season. Thank you for that question. Um, we try and have like three approaches, right? We do a questionnaire, which is then published on our website. Um, and then we do a candidate form in the primary. And then we do a candidate form in the general. That Got said, it. not every year there is a primary because it depends, a primary is triggered by a, a certain amount of candidates who run. So some years we only do one. Okay, that makes sense, thanks. Sure. Um, there is a question about if you're willing to share any of the documents that you had on the screen or if should people just email you to get those? Um, yeah, it, send me uh, an email and I'll be, I'll be happy to, to uh, uh, share them with you. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, any other questions? We've got 20 minutes if people would like to ask questions. Um, I'll pose one while people might be thinking about it, but how do you um, incorporate bikes into like physically have bikes at your event or show like the presence of bikes at your forum? Yeah, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a great question. Um, so Asheville on bikes, we have like a bike valet, uh, service that we bring to events that we have in our events. We have a whole series of, uh, mobile, um, bike racks. And, uh, so there's that, that those are set up and, you know, percentage of people, uh, ride, um, and we often try to host our events in places that are accessible by sidewalks, transit, uh, and uh, biking routes um, as well. We don't always do that. Uh, we have been fairly criticized for hosting our events off of transit routes, um, a little bit too far from uh, a uh, sidewalk. Um, but that also is like, you know, the, the, the constraints of the budget, right? If you're, if you're, you got to go work with the people that, um, uh, who you, who have the resources for you to host the event. And sometimes, uh, things are, are, are not perfect. And so I wouldn't aim for, uh, perfection. I mean, if you can get people there on bikes, that, that, that really clear visual presence is, um, uh, important. Um, but also like, you know, people are going to drive in too, and that's okay because that's your future, right? The, the, the folks who want to be able to bike or walk or transit, but, um, aren't, aren't, aren't quite able to do so because of the, uh, existing conditions, right? If things did not need to change, uh, we wouldn't be hosting candidates forms on active transportation. Uh, so, you know, uh, give yourself leeway, I think, in planning your space and kind of, especially again, if you're going 
Um, first time out of the gates, you know, it's it, it's okay to make something work uh, while acknowledging uh, that it can be that it, that it can be better. Um, but like, you know, make something work. Is that did I answer the question? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, does anybody have a question? I see Jennifer, you're unmuted. Do you have a question or not? No, I'm good. Okay, great. Um, so, and I know something else that happens to a lot of people is they get scared to host a candidate forum. Um, mostly because of their status, perhaps as like a 501 C three. So I don't know if you have advice or, um, want to say anything about, um, that and like your process for handling that. I know you touched think, on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great, I think that's a great question. Again, I said at the beginning, right. That our candidates forums are housed under our education, uh, programming. And you can, you can, um, when you file and you do your 990, you know, we, Put that in there that this is edu uh, education and so there there's a couple of things that i think that are really important to be able to do um at the beginning too i talked about like sort of writing out your your email copy um ahead of time and that uh there's an insurance policy in that because what you are doing is you're giving the candidates all the same exact information over and over and over again you're not favoring one candidate uh uh, over the other. Additionally, when I um, uh, speak to a candidate or uh, when a candidate e emails me and I and they might have a question, I track that. I put that into the spreadsheet, the date, and you know some loose notes and 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 tag that email so that I have a running track record of um, the types of uh, communication um, that that I have. Uh, and then thirdly, one of the things that um, uh, I have learned too, is when we first started doing this, we would craft a tailor-made question uh, to each candidate at the end. And um, we got some legal counsel uh, not to do that, um, to ask all the same questions of the same candidates. Um, and so uh, now, let me change that up a little bit. One of the things that we do in our, our, our q and A, it, it, it's kind of set up like a, uh, a Jeopardy game board where uh, the candidates, you know, select a, uh, an icon. Let's say it's like a train. It won't necessarily be a train question, um, but uh, it will reveal the, the question will be revealed. And so not all the candidates are, are, are responding to the exact same question, but all the candidates have the same opportunity to get that question if you're following me, right? Um, so that is uh, uh, totally uh, fair. You know, I would definitely, if you're, you know, concerned, um, I, I, I would check, you know, get some resources to find out, uh, you know, what's going to work best for you so that you feel comfortable. But as long as you're not endorsing a candidate and you're just talking about the issues, uh, the plans, the future, um, what could be done. Um, you are uh, A-OK -okay to host a, uh, a candidate uh, forum. Cool, thank you. Um, any questions from anybody? If not, I'll ask one last question before we wrap up, which I know I've run into in my time hosting candidate forums, but um, what do you do about photos and like getting promotion and you seemed like you had so many like nice pictures um I almost always forget to take photos of something so what do you do about that yes so that good that's a good question now we kind of goes back into our our budget what I have learned um because I struggled for so many years not capturing the moment and, you know, uh, when we first started doing this, Instagram wasn't even really a thing. Um, but those photo assets are so important, uh, particularly for like future invites to candidates who might be nervous about this issue. But if you send them a photo of people sitting at a bench talking and having a uh, pleasant conversation, uh, you know, a lot of candidates don't that's not what they're thinking about when they're thinking about uh, uh, candidate um, uh, forums. So I, I think it, getting those photo assets are really, really important. Um, Ashland Bikes is in a place right now where we, we I hire a photographer 
um, to come in and capture all of those uh, all of those images. I also um, share those images with the candidates as well. You know, say like, hey, you can't say that AOB endorses you or anything like that. But if you want to put these out and say that you participated in this uh, forum, by all means, and that's an incentive for them to participate. Um, so if you don't, if you're not in a place where you can go out there and hire a photographer, you know, go back to that whole who's going to be the volunteer with the dedicated, um, uh, you know, camera or phone, uh, a, a novice uh, photographer, someone who who would be willing to uh, donate some time to be able to do that. But absolutely designate someone. It should not be the person who's making the thing happen or the facilitator. You know, you need a dedicated person and that person's job is to get the video and the and the photo assets that night. That's a really good point, Anna. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah, absolutely. I know, you know, a photo is worth a thousand words. So if you have a good photo, it'll go a long way and for future future years down the road for advertising for your next forum, you know, make it happen. So with that, um, one last ask, does anybody have a question that you'd like to ask? Um, now's your time. Um, go for it. Yeah, I had one last question and I kind of struggled with this with our candidate forum. How much information do you provide for them to go ahead and say, this is what we're going to go into and in knowing what kind of questions they're going to be asked versus trying to really kind of like, you know, getting them to be more real with their answer to not come up with a canned response to your questions. Right. No, I think that's a really good point. And that's, you know, back to our, where we put um, four voters and we would change that out uh, about topics of the day. And, um, you know, you can release a uh, PDF or put it on your website um, that like, these are the topics that we care about. These are the, the you know, these are our concerns. These are the, uh, um, we have like a reading list, for example. Uh, this is, uh, these are the people who inform our thinking on these, on these matters. And so you can share those resources with candidates as long as you are sharing them with all of the candidates, right? So when they RSVP for your candidate form, you can send them an attachment that says, hey, you might be interested in this and uh, list it out. And as long as all of those candidates um, receive that, 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 you know, that's fine. And again, um, I, you know, they're busy, right? Again, they're going to be at the, the, the bike thing on Tuesday. They're going to uh, uh, the AARP thing on Wednesday. You know, that's like one right after the other. So the more that you can create like simple bullet points that are uh, digestible, that might inspire the candidate to be more curious or interested in the topic as opposed to showing up like fully informed, you know, because they're most, most of your candidates in small towns or even like, you know, cities, uh, they're not going to be experts on this uh, topic necessarily. Most often they will not be, but the idea is that you are creating the relationship and the, and the gateway for you to be the expert on uh, complete streets and greenways and transit and so forth and so forth. Yep. So you just kind of reminded me of something else I've ran into, and I don't know what the political environment is like in Asheville, North Carolina, but where we're at is pretty much evenly divided, uh, Republicans and Democrat, but sometime, unfortunately, biking issues tend to be more associated with the liberal uh, part of the politics and trying to invite and welcome Republican candidates or the conservative candidate to participate. Have you found anything that worked or helped to go ahead and try to make sure that you're doing an evenly balanced um, political form that doesn't really seem to favor one end or the other end of the political spectrum. Right. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's a really good um, uh, uh, question. And and really, you know, left or right, um, safety is a uh, issue of safety. Um, trying to frame the candidates form as in issues of the public right of way, you know, so that so that that, you know, we have had candidates, um, I won't say left or right, but we have had candidates who uh, are definitely there to advocate for motorist convenience above, above, uh, above all else. And uh, we want that voice to feel welcomed um, 
at our at our at our forum. So I think it's really important to um, be as welcoming as you can and accept um, uh, different di different points of views. A couple of things: that candidate who is you know the vehicular candidate, that candidate might get elected and become your representative, and that candidate's going to be in office from two to four years, and there's a lot of time. Uh, from the from the time that they're elected to build a um, uh, a relationship, and that you know that person might end up changing and su supporting a complete streets, you know, keeping that open and honest dialogue. Uh, another example, you know, there are really good examples of uh, conservatives uh, making investments in active transportation and greenways. Um, it, the next. Uh, city over Brevard, North Carolina, we have our congressional leader, um, uh, Chuck Edwards, who is a uh, conservative, and he has secured um, a lot of money uh, for an Acousta rail trail. Um, and so, yeah, we're really not talking left or right. You know, we're talking about safe and dignified public rights of way. And what does that mean to you? Uh, we, we would like to know. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. That was that was a really good final question. Um, I am going to put three links in the chat just to bring everybody's attention to them. The first one is just a plug. So you can check out Asheville on Bikes, check out their website. All of their resources are there. You can even um, see the four voters page right there. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. Um, Mike, if you want to put your email in the chat for people, that might be um, the easiest way to get it to everybody who's on the call right now. Um, I'm going to put in a link to join us at the League. We are a member-driven organization, and right now we're in the middle of a member drive. So if you would like to become a member of the League and support work like this, um, we would love to have you join our movement and thousands of others who are with us right now as members all across the country. Um, and then one last plug to submit an RFP and join us at the National Bike Summit, which is the largest gathering of bike advocates in the country in Washington, D.C., over a period of roughly three days. And um, it's super exciting. You can meet all, all sorts of people like Mike and myself and everybody else on this call. And it is a very energizing time where you can learn just a lot of things, see really great infrastructure in DC and check it out in real time by biking around the city. Um, and you can even extend your stay and have a little vacation in DC if you can or so wish to. Um, and with that, I just want to say thank you all for coming. Thank you, especially to Mike for giving this wonderful presentation and, you know, uh, sharing all of your years and years and years of advice and expertise on this topic. And hopefully, you know, if any of you put on a candidate forum, please send us your photos. We would yes. love to see what you're doing. We love to feel connected to everybody across the country as you're doing this kind of stuff. And if you have any questions, you know, you can always reach out to Mike or myself um, at the league. We're here to help you. And that's why we exist. So uh, let us know and stay in touch. And thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Mike. And I'll see yep. everybody later. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye.